Thank you. This is on, I'll be very fast. I'll talk fast. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, Author Gray, and the members of the committee. My name's Jim Sanzero, Jr. I'm uh, a worker with Local 280. We're the paramutual clerks. We're the ones that give you your money when you win at the track. Um, we, I, I'm glad to see this moving forward. I'm 66, looking forward to my retirement soon. My father just retired about a year and a half ago at age 90. Between he and I and my 45 years, we've got 107 years in the business with his brother, his wife, my wife, and my brother. We've got about 145 years in the business. We like it, like to see it stay. And the, the, the owners are clearly important, the jockeys, all the workers. But the, the, the engine that runs his business is the handle. And the handle is increased when the purses are increased. Owners will bring their horses, the field size will grow, the payoffs will increase, the attendance will increase, and we'll keep our horses here in California where the state, it's $3 billion in handle last year. It's millions of dollars to the state and all the counties and the F&E and the Ken Maddy Laboratory at UC Davis. I urge your vote. Thank you very much. I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness. Yeah, my name's Jeff Jacobs, and I'm with the local 280. I've been on both sides of the horse racing industry. I've been, I'm a retired harness uh, driver, trainer, owner, Cal Expo. Now I'm a paramutual for 35 years, and uh, horse racing industry has been decimated. We've lost uh, so many jobs and horses to back east to race senos that we can't even compete anymore. It's, it's all going downhill and stuff. This bill would... Uh, really help the uh, thousands, I'm talking thousands of employees that work at the racetrack. And uh, thank you, Mr. Gray, for recognizing the horse racing industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your name, position, and-, and Hi, my name is Patricia Valenzuela. I'm a member of the CAU Local 280, and I have been a paramutual clerk for 30 years. I support AB 2863 because it provides much needed revenue for horse racing industry as well as the workers. The revenue stream will help keep good horses in California, and it will help keep jobs in California. Please, I respectfully ask for your support. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Sims. I'm not a seasonal worker. I work full time as a paramutual clerk. I got 38 years punching tickets. I haven't had a race since I can remember. Golden Gate Fields, we used to have 50 clerks downstairs on the main line during the week, 50. We're down to two. Now, I want to get your attention because you see a lot of you nodding off here. You know, I'm serious about this. I'm 58 years old. I have a little ways to go on my pension. My medical insurance, my Social Security, I'm terrified. I don't know what's going to happen. Horse racing needs a jump start. I take bets every day. I see what's going on. Indian gaming has a big hand in California. We just want a piece of the pie, just a little slice for my pension. Just think about that tonight. 50 clerks during the week. Today is Wednesday. They would be open during the week. Tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the days we race at Golden Gate, we're down to two clerks. Two clerks. And again, I'm terrified. Horse racing needs a jump start, and I'm a member of a nation in New Mexico. So this is not against the thing talk against my people, but the thing is we need a jump start, share part of the pie. And I don't really trust government, I'm gonna be honest with you, but I'd rather have it in your hands than the internet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, your name, your position, and a, and a brief statement if sure. it's needed at all. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members, Pat Moran, uh, the California Thoroughbred Trainers. Just one real quick note, so we've tried to get uh, online poker passed for almost a decade. It hasn't happened due to opposition from various groups um, opposing the bill. We're always at a stalemate. I just want to point out the fact that the horse racing has taken a huge step back. We've given up a place at the table with regard to being able to operate a site. And in return, we're getting $60 million. So uh, I think, uh, just want to point out the fact that we have taken that step back. I think it's a huge step, um, and hopefully that will get this bill moving. We're going to thank the Assemblyman um, and uh, Assemblymember Reggie Joins Sawyer as well uh, 
for uh, helping uh, keep keeping this moving and um, and hopefully uh, we get the bill passed and we request an I vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next presenter. Hi, my name is Irene Hayes. I've been in the horse racing business for 40 years. I worked for a long time on the backside with the horses. I've been a care mutual clerk for 30 years. I support ABA 2863 because it provides a much needed revenue to the horse racing industry as well as the workers. The, rem the revenue stream will help keep good horses in California and will help keep jobs in California. Thank you for, su for your support and I re respectfully ask for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness. Hello, my name is Paulette Bly. I'm a member of Local 280. I ask for an I vote on this issue. I support Bill 2863. The revenue will help health and welfare and pensions and also the consumers who are gambling online without protection of our state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Renee Bayardo, SEIU, California. We think the time has come to pass a bill. Ask for your I vote. Like that organization of points. <laughs> Hello there. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Tyler Hockey. Um, this is my third uh, year as a paramutual employee. Um, I just uh, came to offer my support for the bill, and hopefully you guys will pass it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, members, chairman. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here today. I'm grateful that you are all here and the people in favor of this bill, and I'm grateful to the people that put the hard work in to write these bills. Um, I've been a member of Local 280 for 38 years. My father started in 1955 and worked up until his death in 1973. My mother worked in the industry from 1976 to 2014, so I have a long standing in this business. Uh, I owe my life to it. And in the future, I'm a bit more optimistic. I see racing coming back on Sundays. I see large crowds out at the racetrack, and I'm optimistic about its future, and I hope you help us keep going that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next witness. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Anthony Gonsalves, representing Del Mar Thoroughbred Club and Oak Tree Racing Association. I want to ch thank uh, Chairman Gray and Assemblymember Reggie Jones-Sawyer for their hard work on this bill. It's very important for racing. And as was stated before, we are giving up our exclusivity for this amount of money. And, and horse racing has been a great sport in this state, and a long tradition, and we ask for your I vote. Thank you. Please. Yes, my name is Carl Kunich. I'm a member of Local 280. Uh, I just retired about two years ago. And I remember before the uh, computer system came in, in the late 70s, early 80s, Bay Meadows and Golden Gate used to pack them on the weekends, 10, 12,000 people. During the week, about four to 6,000 people. Now, during the week now, we used to put uh, as many as 140 people to work during the week and almost 200 clerks on the weekend. But things have changed. A lot of horsemen have, have had to leave the state, uh, can't blame them, due to some heavyweight restrictions, insurance-wise, uh, workman's comp, this and that, and that and this. But uh, I'm still active. They allow me to work weekends, but I don't like to work on Sunday because I've got a honeydew list longer now. <laughs> but anyway, we're 100% behind the bill, Mr. Gray, and I want to thank you very much. And uh, hopefully, thank you for your position. Thank you. Hopefully, it'll all work out. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Troy Tabak, and I'm the vice president of Local 280 Pair Mutual Guild. And I'm asking for an I vote on this bill because, for once, this is something that can help benefit us, the labor force, at the racetracks. It helps the racetracks, it helps the jockeys, but it also will benefit the labor force. And it's been a long time since we've had something like this. So I'm asking for an I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Our last witness. Good Thanks. afternoon. My name is Joe Stellino. I've been in this industry for 45 years. I've seen it at, at its best and at its worst. 
I just hope everybody would vote yes on this bill because we need it in the horse racing industry very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, from the card rooms. We'd like to have the folks that are in support from the card rooms to please uh, make their way up to the front or form a line over by the microphone. Mr. Chairman and members, Dennis Loper representing Commerce Casino. I have with me. Can you hey, talk up a little more, Dennis, please? I'm sorry. I'm Dennis Loper. Loper representing Commerce Casino. I have with me um, Hank yeah. Pine, CEO of Commerce Casino. Honorable Chairman Gray and Vice Chairman Bigelow and members of this committee, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to get up and speak. Um, I am in full support of uh, 2863. Obviously, I'm here. Um, I don't know what I can say that already hasn't been said, but I do want to be on record to say that I feel today when a lot of the tribes have come together and have given that little bit, the card rooms are working with the tribes and now the tracks are on board. I think we have the opportunity this year, as John Papik said, to help the residents in the state of California to have an honest game. In the poker rooms that I'm part of, and I'm representing three poker rooms, the Bicycle Casino, Wine Gardens, and Commerce Casino, we have strict regulations which, which govern us, and we would like to see those regulations also in online poker. Um, you know, a lot has happened. I was amazed that we're here nine years now. Um, you know, I can only say I had a lot more hair nine years ago, but uh, I hope we can get something done before I completely lose it all. So I urge, I urge you all to give this an I vote. It's important not for our industry, but for the people in the state of California. And I know there are some things that still need to be tweaked. We can get it done this year. Thank you very much. Our next witness. Good afternoon. My name is David Fried, and I represent card rooms in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, Chairperson Gray, Vice Chair Bigelow, Assemblyman Joan Sawyer, members of the committee, thank you for scheduling the hearing today. Um, and I want to thank Chairperson Gray and his staff and Assemblymember Joan Sawyer for all your efforts to bring together the various interested parties on this legislation and for the concern you've expressed throughout to make sure that the final legislation reflects sound public policy. Yesterday, we provided the committee with a letter from 20 card rooms throughout the state of various sizes and dispersed throughout the state geographically in support of this legislation. Our reasons are fairly simple. Our industry employs 23,000 people in living wage jobs. We pay hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes which support state and local governments, often supporting public safety and social services. And the survival of our industry is important in many communities where we are the largest employers and the largest taxpayers. Poker historically has been a card room game since the early days of our state. And it remains a significant part of our business. Internet poker is important to us because we think it will broaden play of the game, bring a new generation of players, ultimately into our land-based facilities to play poker. At the same time, because the benefits of Internet poker will accrue to those operators that have a direct stake in it, it's important to us that the legislation ensure that we are able to fully and meaningfully participate in Internet poker, and without the legislation, tilting the playing field in the direction of any one participant. For these reasons, we support Internet poker, and we do so with the understanding that the principles we've identified in our letter can be addressed as the legislation moves through this House. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, members, Ed Manning, uh, on behalf of Hawaiian Gardens, um, we have asked uh, a number of local government uh, uh, folks to help participate in this meeting to talk about the relationship between card clubs and their communities. And so at this time, we'd like to have a few of those folks come up and uh, speak to that issue with the permission of the chair. Our next witness. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Chair Gray and Vice Chair Bigelow, and also the members of the Assembly. Uh, my name is Mel Turner. I'm the City Council member from the City of Citrus Heights and also former mayor of the City of Citrus Heights. 
I was mayor when the uh, new casino, Stones Casino, actually came into our town, which I'll talk about in a second. Before I was elected to the Citrus Heights City Council, I worked for the California Department of Justice. I was the chief of the Advanced Training Center there, and um, <clears throat> we were responsible for actually, I was responsible actually for training the uh, first wave of special agents who came through when we were first started talking about regulating the card rooms. And uh, it was a joy to see the regulation take place. It was a joy to see the special agents, uh, you know, involved in this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I just want to let you know that uh, my background in law enforcement has uh, given me a, a, another view of what regulation is all about and why it's needed and necessary, particularly when it comes to Internet gaming. Uh, through my time at DOJ, because I saw so much regulation of gambling and I saw what it could bring forth in terms of effective regulation that protects the public while also fostering a healthy business climate and creating a positive form of entertainment for the local community, particularly ours. Now that I'm elected official, I'm lucky to be one of the 89 jurisdictions with a card room in my community. Stone's Gambling Hall in the city of Citrus Heights provides over 400 living wage jobs while actively participating in the community and providing for local charities. And by the way, of those 400 jobs, well over 53 of those original new jobs were for Citrus Heights residents, which made us very, very happy. Stone's has turned out to be one of our largest employers in our particular city. Card rooms throughout the state of California are major supporters of local government, providing well over $125 million directly to local government coffers, which will help pay directly for public safety, parks and recreation, water delivery systems, transportation, and social services. With that said, it's time that we all help these card rooms take their business model into the 21st century and help them provide a regulated market where they can offer their product online. It's time to cut off the illegal black market of internet gaming and provide a safe and secure online environment for the citizens of our communities. The passage of a comprehensive internet gaming bill is way overdue and it's time for the state of California to move forward with this bill. I urge you to uh, put a I vote for this particular bill. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Our next witness. Good afternoon. I'm Ralph Franklin, City Councilman for the City of Inglewood. Thank you, Chair, and all Council uh, Committee members. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the California Cities of Self-Reliance Joint Powers Authority, and we thank you for this opportunity to testify in support of AB 2863. California Cities of Self-Reliance Joint Powers Authority is wholly funded by local government funding, and the JPA's mission is to protect local government funding. Our cities benefit tremendously on having card rooms in our cities. Each year, card rooms in Los Angeles County contribute $46.5 million to local government general funds. This money provides basic services such as public safety for police, fire, and paramedic services and human services in our cities. The city card rooms, major employers in the communities and the region. The card rooms in Los Angeles County employ more than 10,000 em employees providing our residents with good paying jobs that enable them to support their family and obtain a piece of the American dream, home ownership and the ability to provide college education for their children. Beyond the normal operation, card rooms in Los Angeles County have a great, has created thousands of constructive jobs as they contribute to invest and upgrade their brick and mortar facilities. There is a course of an additional investment in our economic well-being of our residents and our cities. The Wine Gardens Club room has made an enormous investment in new casino. The Bicycle Club in Bell Gardens has constructed and opened a new hotel. The Hollywood Park Casino in Inglewood is constructing a new casino. Economics has reported that eye poker will contribute hundreds of millions of dollars per year to the state's general fund. I poker allow card rooms and throughout the state that genera generate more interest, more customers who will first learn to play online and then hopefully play at our brick and mortar facilities. I urge you to support a bill that will strengthen our state by generating hundreds of millions of dollars per year to the state's general fund. Vote yes for Assembly Bill 2863. I thank you for your time. Next Good witness. afternoon. Please. Good afternoon. Here. My name is Hank Trimble. I'm a council member for the City of Hawaiian Gardens. I'm here on behalf of California um, Cities of Self-Reliance, Joint Powers and Authority. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to testify on behalf of this bill. The City of Hawaiian Gardens is a no property tax city. While other cities receive either all or part of their property tax, Hawaiian Gardens receives no property tax dollars. 
Our city is dependent on the revenues generated from the Hawaiian Garden Card Club. This card room is vital to the survival of our city. Our city receives over 75% of its funds from the revenues generated from the card club. Without this revenue from the card club, there will be no police service, no fire service, no human service, no library service, or no leisure for the residents of Hawaiian Gardens. In 1997, the Hawaiian Garden Casino employed 75 employees. Today, they employ over 1,000 300 employees, providing them a wage that gives them a quality of life for their families. The card room industry is imperative to the daily lives of our residents and vital to local governments and the state's ability to continue to climb back to fiscal prosperity. An economic study has shown that the eye poker will strengthen the state's economy, providing approximately $1.3 billion over the, a span of the next 10 years. Eye poker has the ability to generate more interest in play in poker. I urge you to place a yes vote on this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next witness, sir. Ms. David. Wait, hold, hold, hold on. We've got one more witness up here. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Bigelow, members of the committee, Mr. Gray, Mr. Jones-Sawyer. I am Jorge Rifa. I am the city administrator of the City of Commerce, and uh, I'm here this afternoon to ask for your support to keep this bill moving forward and to make it to the finish line. Uh, you heard just a few minutes ago from the CEO of uh, the Commerce Casino, uh, Mr. Papayan, I'm here to underscore the importance of the Commerce Casino to our city. We're an industrial city in the county of Los Angeles. We have over 1,800 businesses. Uh, there, there's parts for the Mars Rover that are manufactured there. There's also cookie dough that is made there as well as uh, parts fabricated for uh, domestic airliners. All in all, uh, we have a $59 million operating budget to, to provide services for 1,800 businesses with a daytime population in excess of 80,000 people. Uh, we're also an AB8, uh, a low property tax city. And just to underscore the significance of, of the revenue contribution that the casino uh, makes to the ability for our community to provide goods and services. Uh, the casino generates about $22 million a year to our revenue base. That's about 37% of our budget. In turn, with 1,800 businesses, what we generate in property tax is $1.7 billion. Excuse me, $1.7 million. So, uh, yeah, there's a slight difference. But anyways, uh, we're here this afternoon to echo our support. Uh, we're also members of the authority uh, for the bill to move through this committee and, and out to the assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Our next witness. Mr. Chairman and members, my name is David Kim. I represent Bay 101 located in uh, San Jose, and we're in support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other local governments here that wish to speak in support? Seeing no, no one rise to that call, anyone else that wishes to address this body that has felt missed in one of the categories that wishes to say something in support, please rise, that are willing to stand and say something in support. Seeing no one else remaining to speak in support, we will go to the uh, tweeners. Are there any tweeners, any in between support and opposition? Seeing no one rise to that, we'll go to opposition. Anyone wishing to? Uh, speak in opposition. Mr. Chairman and Member Scott Wetch, on behalf of the Stronach Group, which owns and operates Santa Anita Raceway, the LA Turf Club, and Golden Gate Fields, I'd like to preface my comments by first uh, thanking the author and the chairman for his uh, diligent work on this issue and for having worked with us closely over the years on this issue. Unfortunately, we're still in the position of having to oppose the bill today uh, because 
we are still concerned with the impact that it would have uh, absent some further protections for the horse racing industry. As was stated earlier by some of my colleagues in the industry, this coming year we're going to uh, get somewhere north of 40% of the total handle from our exclusive uh, right as the only legal platform of wagering. Giving that up for a, uh, a significant amount of compensation, but a funding source that is not protected in the long term is still a concern to us. We still believe that the best answer to our industry's needs is to have a license and to be able to compete openly uh, in the eye poker field uh, with all the other groups that have been afforded uh, a license. It's somewhat ironic that we're the only legally permissible form of internet wagering, but yet the only industry that's being excluded uh, from this bill. Having said that, I'm confident that as we continue to work on this bill, as it moves out of this house, and given our relationship with the chair, I think that we can continue to provide some belt and suspenders and hopefully get us to a position of being able to support the bill uh, before its final passage. Thank you. Thank you. Our next witness in opposition. Uh, thank you, Chairman Gray, Vice Chairman Bigelow. My name is David Cookson, and I'm here on behalf of the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling. And I'd like to preface my remarks by thanking the chairman. He has been very open to having members of our coalition. They participated in his information session. Uh, although we have been in opposition of, to the bill from the beginning, he has been very gracious, and we appreciate the committee's indulgence as well to provide what we think is a small dose of, or maybe a hefty dose of reality to the world of internet gaming. Uh, let me give you a little bit about my background. I was the Chief Deputy Attorney General in the state of Nebraska for eight years. Before that, I spent four years as Special Counsel to the Attorney General, primarily working on internet enforcement issues, including one very near and dear to the heart of this committee, the Master Settlement Agreement with the tobacco companies. Uh, I've spent a number of time, I've helped create an internet crimes against children. I've led investigations into consumer protection issues on the internet and as much as a wonderful thing the internet is it is always also a very dark and dangerous place and unfortunately unlike brick and mortar casinos it's virtually impossible to keep it within the boundaries of a state notwithstanding the technology companies belief that they can do such we know it's not true even something as simple as a state lottery online, we've been able to penetrate multiple times from places out of state. We know because we've investigated companies in the past that children can access the internet through their parents' logins, passwords, birth dates, and that really no verification system yet exists that can keep minors and children from this. So the problem is, with little or no regulatory enforcement, and I drafted a letter on behalf of 14 attorneys general in 2014 asking Congress to overturn what was a dark of night action by the U.S. Department of Justice to change the Wire Act, short of returning and restoring the Wire Act to prohibit internet gaming, there really is no solution. We know it's harmful to children. We know that the illegal sites that exist now are doing it. A March 2016 study from Canadian Public Health fa has found that teens are gambling online now at a significantly higher rate. We know it's harmful for problem gamblers. It creates easier access, which means greater danger. And we know that the criminal element exists, and we've already talked about that today, and again, the chairman recognizes that issue and spoke very forcefully to it. One thing that we don't believe that folks have paid enough attention to is the experience of the three states who have legalized internet gaming. Delaware, New Jersey, New York. And I want to focus on New Jersey. There are a lot of revenue projections that get thrown about when it comes to internet gaming. And yet the reality is those projections are rarely, if ever, met. It was projected that New Jersey would see somewhere in the neighborhood of over $150 million. So far, it's been 29, roughly 20%. Guarantees that are based off of a revenue projection, whether it's to the horsemen or to others, 
may very well be unattainable, which will either result in changing the tax structure or significantly curtailing what available revenue is to be divvied up amongst the various players. And we know the offshore folks will continue to siphon off big junks, chunks. The Department of Justice has been pulling giant investigations since 2011 when they took down poker stars, when they and now have taken down full tilt, when they have gone after all of the major players. So we know that will continue to exist. And in fact, we know it exists because our experience in enforcing internet tobacco sales has told us that it doesn't work on a state level. In fact, we had an $8 billion dispute that we settled with the tobacco companies in 2013, of which California was one of the 26 states that joined our coalition and received a significant chunk of money. But the main sticking issue in those negotiations were how to deal with internet sales. And the reality is we made a financial decision about how to deal with internet sales because you simply can't stop them unless you stop them as they come in at the border. And even there, that doesn't translate to internet gaming. Whereas I can put state patrol officers on a border and seize a shipment or a truck full of cigarettes that's been purchased on the internet, I can never put state patrolmen on the border and seize a bet or a better coming in from somewhere they don't belong. So with that, I think really the only conclusion and the suitability issue has been dealt with, has been discussed, and I think the chairman from the tribes put it the best. Uh, most of the big players in this industry have either been indicted by our Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, or by other foreign countries. So it's very problematic. Finally, in conclusion, I think Senator Feinstein put it best in language that she ensured in an appropriations bill last week that passed 31 to nothing which is since 1961, the Wire Act has prohibited nearly all forms of gambling over interstate wires, including the internet, and certain states began to permit it. The committee notes the Wire Act did not change in 2011. The committee notes the Supreme Court has stated that criminal laws are for the courts, not the government to construe. And until the federal government takes up its responsibility and addresses the Wire Act, it's premature for states to wade into an area that is fraught with peril. And I appreciate the opportunity to present our views.